Yeah, that's all she needs. How's everybody doing? Y'all all right? Come on, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Hey, so the time is now 11.40. We will be done by 12.15, so that's exactly about what, 35 minutes? All right. Now, um, normally, normally I'll have the board and I'll write up what we're going to talk about, so I need you to use your imaginations. Now, do, I do understand not everybody is a vis is an auditory learner. Auditory learner is a person who listens by or learns by, by hearing. I'm a visual learner. I got to see pictures and graphs and sentences. So I want you to bear with me. Okay? So I'm going to go through a little bit of this, and I want you all to participate. All right? And this is continuing with the theme that Mr. Mike kind of uh, presented before. All right? Just in a different capacity. So, today, so today's topic is... No more comfortable pain. No more comfortable pain. In a lot of ways, I view addictions as comfortable pain. But before I get into my interpretation of what this means, let me present to you what the, what the, uh, the author wrote. All right? Okay? So we're going to begin with uh, a, uh, a verse out of the Bible. John 5 and 6. It says... When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had already been, been a long time in that condition. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition. Now, we discussed this same topic a couple months ago. So some of y'all may sound familiar. Now, this particular verse in John 5 and 6 was talking about this one gentleman who had been laying by uh, what, Mike? He was laying by the pool. But he was laying by the pool for like days and weeks and months, maybe for a long time. For a long time. And he was laying there why, Mike? Because he was waiting on. Begging. He was begging. He was a begging. He was a Yeah, he went for his blessing. That's what it was. Yeah, what you talking about? I want to know. Well, we talking about right now. Uh, yeah. So it was a man laying by the uh, by uh, by the pool. He was waiting on his blessing, right, John? Right. Everybody kept jumping in front of him. That's what it was. Yes. So you hear Mike? So everybody was everybody was jumping in front of him. What did you want to add something to it? Yeah, um, um, he, well, he was waiting on Jesus to to. Well, I think he was blind. One of them was blind. Was he blind, Mike? He was lame. He couldn't walk. He was waiting for him to stir up the water. Yeah, that's what it was. He was lame. That's right. Dwayne, let Bella out because she's looking stupid in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's in my other book, it's Bethesda, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so, let me continue. So, I wanted you all to hear that, that particular verse because that is the premise, meaning what? That's the beginning of what the story I'm about to read and what we're going to talk about is about, uh, is, 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 is based on. Now, here's the thing. It's one thing to hear somebody's story, but it's another thing to understand the origins of the story. What does the word origins mean? The, 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 the Wait, one, then two. Okay. What? The original version. The original version. Like but the root. The the root. Right, right, right. So, what? The plot. The plot, right. So, the origin, if you look at this tree, right, the origins of that tree isn't the bark. Look, 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 look. This is a tree trunk. This, okay. This is a this is a tree. We see it, right? But the bark doesn't tell the tree's story. What lies beneath? Right. It's the roots. So we just talked about addictions, did we not? So what we talked about with addictions, we talked about the tree, what we can see. Now this body group, we're gonna talk about the roots, the origins of why people have addictions. So let's keep going. Be along with me, okay? Try to get to where you can, uh, you can, you can hear. All right. I'm using my coach Leo voice. This is the voice I use when I'm coaching. So I'm gonna try to use my coach voice today. All right. Uh, are you missing your potential possibilities because you have become comfortable with where you are? Ask that question again. It's rhetorical, meaning I don't expect you to answer. But there are some questions I am going to expect you to answer. And remember, when you answer these questions, it's not for my benefit, it's for the benefit of the people that are sitting beside you. Okay? Let me get a couple pictures when you can. 
Are you stuck in your in your comfort zone? Question: What's a comfort zone? Somebody define what a comfort zone is before we keep going. Hakeem, no. and then no. That's yeah, Hakeem says when you're able to relax. What's the comfort zone, good brother? Same position. Same position. Ain't moving forward. Ain't moving forward. Ain't moving backwards. You stand stagnant, right? Let's keep going. Tony Jerry gives a great definition of a comfort zone. This is what he says. It is a mental state in which you lose the momentum to pursue a vision because why? Because you accepted where you are as the best you need or to be, or, uh, need to be or do. And read it again. So this gentleman says that comfort zone is a mental state in which you lose the momentum to pursue a vision because you have accepted where you are as best you need to be or do. I'm not a drug addict, but I am a gummy bear addict. Y'all know this. It's my truth. I am happy to say I've been sober and free of gummy bears for almost a, it's been 10 days. Amen. And I feel good. Amen. Let me tell you why it's important. One of the things I do every other week is I run obstacle course races. It's about 10, 15, 20 miles. And it's obstacles. I got to climb stuff. I got to jump over stuff. I got to climb mountains. And, stuff, and it's difficult. Now, one thing I've learned about my body as an athlete when I'm competing is whatever I consume, I feel that thing when I'm running. So if I eat that donut, I got to run, I gotta run another mountain in Asheville this Saturday. I'm going to feel that donut. As I'm running, I'm going to feel that cramp, right? If I drink that soda water, listen, I'm going to feel my hamstrings tighten up. There's too much sugar, right? Yeah. So... My motivation to get off the gummy bears was, well, I don't want to feel it my next race. Right. So some of us are addicted to different things. And I'm not going to go back and, and, um, and, and the mic's uh, done, I see you, I'm going to call you. But my thing is this. Once upon a time, I was comfortable eating gummy bears. Why? Because I wasn't exercising. I wasn't running. I wasn't competing. So the gummy bears didn't hurt me. But the moment I decided to change and move in a different direction, I started to feel the gummy bears. Go ahead. Okay, now what if, okay, okay, what if you're over the, you know, you, you're still, I'm still an addict, but I'm not you. Mike, it's your question. And I'm trying to move forward, and I'm trying to move forward, and, but it's certain limitations that are stopping me from moving forward. You know what I'm saying? You know, believe me, I don't want to be stuck, because this is not where I come from. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I come from making 825 a week. Mm. When I lost my leg last year, everything just stopped in one day, so I went through a depression. But I'm out of that depression, and I'm, I'm walking. I got my leg. I'm walking on it, and I want to move forward, man. You get what I'm saying? So tell me how. Tell me what the procedure is. Push on. You know what I'm saying? I got you covered. I got you covered. I think. Keep listening to the message. I'm gonna come back to that. But I want Mike to answer from a, from the addict standpoint in terms of um Mike. You're just question. Okay. You got to get out of here and plug in the other resources, other people, go to places, other things. Changing all that, man. Yeah, yeah. So that's, 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 that's. You know what I mean? Like I was talking about the meetings. Uh-huh. I'm serious, oh, yeah. man. Man, no, I'm a high school. I'm a high school. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, I just relapsed two months ago because I went through a deep depression again about this leg, you know. Right. And, and the only way I knew how to handle that, I, you know, I'm, I'm emotionally, I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally disturbed okay. because of this. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm, I'm coming to some acceptance that it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I can't live a productive life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just called my job and they told me I could come back. There you go. But I got to get the doctor released. So uh, I will shoot, I shoot, if it's not this month, coming up, it'll be in September. But man, I'm ready to go now. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 go ahead, Mike. Plan of action, get that doctor released. There it is, there it is. There it is, there it is. I just came out of there. I got to go, I got a point with him on the 22nd. I got one on the 2nd, then I got with the orthopedic, I got to get a release from them. Then I got to get a, so they got to see if my balance. So, so I want y'all, I want y'all to hear this dialogue. The dialogue, meaning the discussion that's coming over here. You can learn again. I told you, you're not gonna learn from me. I'm not here to teach you. You all are here to teach each other with each other's testimonies. Now, this young man just shared a, a really powerful story. 
His, but it began with the origins of his question. The origins being what? Not the tree trunk, but the roots, right? I didn't know this story. I can look at him, I can see the tree trunk. But until he opened his mouth, he, he disclosed to me the origins of what happened. And, and You see what I'm saying? So now I know that where he, where he used to be was, I, he wasn't in this situation. So his question was, well, how do, I, how do I get past where I presently am? His question was the same question this gentleman in his book that was sitting by the pool waiting on a miracle, right? He was panhandling. He was, he was begging. He was, he was waiting. But his thing was this. Before I, you know what, let me just keep going because I don't want to tell the story too quick. Here we go. Do you continue to complain and grumble about your situation while doing nothing about it? I think that's the worst kind of person, right? You saying you complain, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Well, move out of the sun. <laughs> Why are you sitting back there complaining about the sunshine? Well, look, it's a big old tent, it go all the space. All you have to do is what? Pick your chair up and move right here. Well, let me ask you this question. Why don't people do that? Why would a person sit in the back, in the heat, in the sun, and complain to their neighbors to left and the right, distracting them about how they're uncomfortable they are, instead of go ahead and just moving to the front? Why, why do you think people do that? Anybody? Come on, answer that question, y'all. Raise your hands so I can hear you. One, then two, then three. seminars like you do. Sure. You know, um, being in the front, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, you know, don't really want to pay attention. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we sit back in the back and we complain about it. And to me, regardless of the fact that it's uncomfortable. Fact, wow. Even though the message is clear, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not subjected to the message because we want to sit back in and complain. Where's that come from? Man, well, they come from, not, they come from, they, they really come from you know, me. Yeah. come from, you know, being not taught in the home. Wow. Again, origins. Who else had? Somebody else had a comment. I forget. I, I pointed to some people. Perry was, was it Mark, Mark Perry? Why, why do people sit in the back in the sun when they can just move up in the shade? Why do they do that? Why do they stay, stay in an uncomfortable situation? They're used to a hard environment. They're used to a Wow. You already said they're used to a hard environment. They're used to a hard environment. Yeah, very hot. Let me tell you. Right. So I'm gonna get to Mike's point. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all, most of y'all know my background, right? So I started off from country boy in the field, uh, putting watermelon, working in the sun. You know what I'm saying? Shutting corn. But it, hey, that's a hard environment. Yeah, yeah, man. But here's the difference, right? Because I got comfortable in that because that's all I knew. But once I started playing ball and traveling and, and going to school, and I said, wait a minute, time out. I can make money and, and I ain't got work in art. I move. Let me, tell, let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what happened. This is what happened. Uh, uh, I went from. I was born in the sunshine, right? It's hot. Yeah. And as I grew, I said, okay, wait a minute. It's shade. Let me see what it feel like in the shade. Uh -huh. But I got in the shade and I said, listen, I love y'all in that sun, but I'm going to stay in the shade. Uh -huh. Mike, wh why do people stay uncomfortable? Yeah. Sometimes they don't know they can move. <laughs> why? Did y'all hear what he said? Sometimes Some you don't know you can move. Uh, I ain't really able to move, so You know? What's that saying? No better. Do better. Uh -huh. yeah. Some people won't even say, yeah. excuse me, it's hot back here, uh, okay. can I move? Uh -huh. Yeah. They just sit here and be like, man, I'm just in this old group, man. I mean, can I say it's something? They just like being in addiction. Mm -hmm. Some of you don't be in that body. Like, uh -huh. like send me in the trap. Uh -huh. We want to move, we want, you know, for things, I'm tired of getting high, man. Uh -huh. But you constantly getting high, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because that's all you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't mm -hmm. know how to move forward. You mm -hmm. say you want to move forward, but mm -hmm. you don't know the, you don't know the, the, the resources yeah. to move forward. Yeah, yeah. Because all you know is people getting high. Uh -huh. Yeah. And everybody doing the same thing. But see, sometimes we got to separate ourselves from that position. Yeah. Uh, you see, that's, that's what I was just trying to do. I'm trying to separate myself from this position, man. Yeah. You know, because the more you sit in this rut, the more, you know, I see every day, man, the people doing the same thing, repeat it, repeat it, and they ain't even getting at it. <laughs> it's, it's a learned day. It's just the same thing like over and over. Man, I get up out of here, even if for here, I put my leg on, man, yeah. I get on that bus, well, I, don't use, I don't use Medicaid for nothing. Because I'm a self-independent person, man. I cook, I clean, you did what I'm saying? I, I do everything myself. Yeah. Let me take it a step. Yeah. Let me take it a step further. Let me take it a step further. I'm not going to lie. Where I live is a very nice neighborhood. Nice big house, nice neighborhood. Here's the thing. I'm never home. 
My wife is home, my kids are home, but I'm never home. You know why? Because the people in my neighborhood are retired. They have, they have no will or desire to move. They're comfortable. Now granted, that's a nice, comfortable area. But when I travel, I see million dollar houses. So in my mind, it's like, listen, if I become complacent, I'm gonna always be in this nice house. I don't wanna be in a nice house. I wanna be in a, in a, in a, in a great big mansion. But you can't get to the mansion being comfortable. Yes. So on one level, you can say that, you know what, being an addict, being comfortable is one thing, and, and they may not know better. I can say the same thing about people who live in the suburbs. Right. They're comfortable. Yeah. So you go knock on their door and say, listen, do you want to do better than this? No, nah, I'm making $100,000 a year. I'm good. Wait, you don't want to make a million dollars? No, I'm good. Why? I just don't want to move. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Where I come from, we didn't aspire to be a hundred thousand. We aspire to be millionaires. You feel me? I, right. I beat my body up when I was a, a young dude because I want an NFL scholarship uh, contract. You see? I haven't changed. I just didn't make it to the NFL, but I came close. <laughs> and I'm still hungry. You feel me? <laughs> so the thing is this. A lot of times you have to check the people to your left and your right because they may not be hungry. They may be satisfied with that little sun kiss pineapple soda. I'm good, man. I got my soda today. And I'm like, but you don't want to get a, 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 a whole meal? Nah, I'm good, with the, I'm good with the soda. So you could be this person sitting by the pool waiting on your miracle, your blessing, right? right. But everybody around you is happy with just the soda. But you don't want a soda. You want something more than that. Right. One more. Go ahead, and we'll get back to the Let's Go. Um, that, that's just like um, Otis Redding about the song with Doc of the Bay. <laughs> yeah. Y'all know that song? Yeah. Hey, they got to listen to it. A lot of people don't know. They just listen to it, but they don't understand the meaning of the song. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, welcome, Ricky. Let's keep going, y'all, because we got a lot of lessons and time is moving. This is a great discussion. Hey, hey, if something's in your mind, I need you to raise your hand. I need you to speak on it, all right? Let me, let me, let me make that clear. You got something? Okay. Do you... <clears throat> You know you need to do things differently, but you allow familiarity to keep you living in a comfortable pain. You stay in the trap because that's, you feel like that's all you know. Let's keep going. You know you need to make a move. You know you need to make a move. You are unsatisfied with where you are, and it seems as if life is rapidly passing you by. Your neighbor's here today, they gone tomorrow. Sometimes passing you by means people are dying, left and right. right. You smoking and drinking with them, next thing you know they dead. Yeah. And you still sitting there. In my mind, listen, I know we all going to die one day, but I ain't trying to go out like this. I'm trying to live a little bit. Let's keep moving. Your job is sucking the life out of you, but you stay where you are, miserable and unhappy. Because you say, I have to pay the bills, or there are no jobs out there. Some of y'all, most of them, most of us, okay, all of us, collect some form of a check. And we tell ourselves, you know what, I, I, there's no job for me. I have a felony on my record, or I have a disability, or my back hurt. So I'm going to collect this 719, 720, 750, 7, whatever it is, a month, and I'm cool with that. But a young man like myself may come and say, listen, listen, listen. If you come with me to this establishment two, three times a week for 10 hours, what if I can guarantee you $700 a week? You may think about it, but wait, time out, wait, hold on. How many hours I gotta go? Three days, 10 hours, what am I doing? Why are you asking all these questions? I just told you I'm gonna pay you $700 a week. And then you think about it like, you know what? Um, I kinda like my bed bugs and I like only being fed a sun-kissed pineapple juice and I kind of like um, having the ball cigarette so even though $700 a week sounds good I don't really know if, if, if I'm comfortable with making a change y'all didn't catch that let me keep going no you didn't no you didn't no you didn't I don't think it, yeah, I don't tell think me, it, tell me, tell go, me, go. tell me, tell me, okay, me hey, 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 so Mike, 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 listen, 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 man, I see you around here, you're doing your thing, and, 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 and I think you have some potential, some potential to earn more than what, what's being given to you from the government, more than my check, more than your check, more than your check, in fact, I can prove that if you just give me three days, 10 hours a day, right, for three days during the week, I will guarantee you $700 
cash money in your pocket. Okay, but um, I want to mess up my check though. Well, you well you gonna mess up your check. Matter of fact, you you probably gonna have to pay pay some money back because you're gonna be making three three times that much, four times. I, I don't know, man. My check though, you know that's guaranteed, you know. But if you go get up and go to work three these three days, it's guaranteed also. Man, I can't get it like under the table or something. No, you can't get it under the table. I'm paying you on top of the table. What's I don't understand. What? <laughs> That's how it comes across. I don't want to lose my check. See. So, so, so this check, right? The comfortable pain. How is that not a comfortable pain? Because it is a pain. Let me tell you why it's a pain. Let me tell you why it's a pain. I'm gonna be transparent. When I sit down, I talk to seven people. I've made seven hundred dollars. Why? Because I sacrificed. I went to school forever and a day, and I'm still going to school, but I'm working. So here's the thing: you can't sit here and tell me that you're gonna give me a seven hundred dollar check a month, and I'm gonna just sit down and do nothing. You crazy? You don't lost your mind. Here's the thing: I've never known a comfortable pain. Where I come from, listen, listen. A closed mouth don't get fed. You feel me? A uh, man that don't work don't eat. You understand me? So for you to sit and tell me you're going to give me some free money for me to sit still? Nah, homeboy. That works against my DNA. I ain't built like that. I got to move and shake. I got to do stuff. Case in point, the change begins with you. This man, this this person who he had no sight, right? He, he, he was hungry. His legs was gone, right? He somehow another. He got out of that house and he got to wherever that, that lake was, that pool was. That's hunger, yo. That's a person who ain't gonna settle for seven hundred dollars a month. He moved to that thing and he said, "No, nah, man, I'm tired of these bird bugs biting me. I'm tired of this loud noise. I'm tired of this foolishness. I can't see it, but I can feel it, and it's torture. It's like I'm in hell. If I'm gonna be in hell, let me, let me, let me at least make an attempt to get out of hell, right? So let's see what happens to him. I say, hand, I'm, I'm gonna call you. You may know that there is a business in you. Hey, hold on. I don't think I caught that. You may know." That there's a business inside you. Listen, listen. I don't think y'all. God already put what's inside you in you. All you got to do is distract exactly. it. You just got to make it happen. Yeah. Exactly. For real. I'm, I'm being honest. How many of y'all can push a lawnmower? Raise your hand if you can push a lawnmower. All right, hands down. I have that okay. Uh, okay, check this out. How many of y'all can cook in a microwave? Raise your hand. In a, I said a microwave. I didn't say oven. All right, all right. Hold on, hold on. Check this out. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> How many of you all can pick up trash in the grass? Even if I give you a stick with a, with a, a little nail in. Yeah. Okay. Guess what? These are all businesses. These are all opportunities for you to earn an income. There's somebody who want, who needs you to cook their food and just warm it up. There's somebody who they need you to cut their grass. Myself, I'm tired of cutting it. I ain't going to lie. I pay you whatever you need. Just get there with stuff. I pay you. Just tell them the price. You got a business in you. But because you're comfortable with your money that you think you're receiving, you don't even try. My thing is this. All right, I can understand if you tried 50 businesses, Mike, and you failed at every single business. Like, Leo, listen, dude, I done tried all these businesses. I just need a break, man. Let me just be on, on my SSI for about 10 months, then I'll try again. I can even respect that because what? You tried, now you just want to kind of just rest, right? But some of y'all ain't never even tried. Like you never even tried. This morning when I was driving, Dwayne, get that power weight out that uh that uh green machine in the van, the yeah, pedophile van. Go give me that. So I was driving to work. I see Dan, I'm, I'm gonna call you. You see it? You got it? Hold it up for me. No, just hold it up. Look at that red, look at look at that red power weight. Let me tell you the origins of where that power weight came from. As I was driving here, right, I stopped at a stoplight, and these young kids was, 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 was selling the power rays. I told the young lady, I said, come to the truck. She came to the truck. I said, how much the power raid? She said, $2. I gave her $10. I said, keep the change. Mm-hmm. I didn't get the power raid because I was thirsty. Why did I get the power raid? Because you blessed that business. You blessed that business. You blessed that business. They blessed. I blessed their business. They blessed. Those kids woke up that morning and said, there's a business in me. I'm not going to wait for my mom to get home with the food stamps. I'm not going to wait for, nah, 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 nah. I'm going to get out here and I'm going to get it. 
They moved. They was in an uncomfortable pain. They was hungry at the house. And they said, listen, we got some power rays. Let's go out here and let's sell them. See what we can make. That little girl didn't know that she was, or maybe she did. She didn't know that she was going to, somebody in the green, ugly van was going to stop and give her $10 for a dollar power aid. So if a child knows how to get away from an uncomfortable pain, why in the hell can't grown-ups know to get away from an uncomfortable Y'all got to help me with this because I don't know. I'm a therapist, but I'm still learning. Mike, why? 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 Why is it children can get out the bed and go hustle, right? And make more, make seven hundred dollars in a week, right? Selling waters and Gatorades, but grown-ups won't do it. Why, Mike? And then Ricky. It's just this strange familiarity and the pain that we used to. I'm okay with this. This is what I've been doing. This is what I'm gonna do. Really? Some people think like that. I still understand. Ricky, help me. I think they were motivated. You think who's motivated? Yeah. Okay, but why aren't the grown-ups doing the same thing? They, they, think, they think other people are doing it. They say, okay, let's go sell. Some but I'm still lost. Help. Wait, wait, help me out, Ricky. Ricky, wait, man, wait. I need you to, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm slow, y'all. So I went to, 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 to the courthouse with one of our, our, our people in this group, you know, because they got um, in trouble for soliciting and, and panhandling. And my thing was. Why weren't they maybe trying to sell something? Or why weren't they trying to be... Because the little kids don't get... I talked to the police officer and said, Listen, please, can... Where, is it legal for people to sell? And yeah, you can sell on the streets, so on and so forth. But you can't loiter. You can't panhandle. You can't, you can't drag yourself out of the house and lay in front of somebody's store and ask for a handout. But you can drag yourself out of the house and stop at that street and say, Listen, I'm trying to sell something. Why is that? Go. You know, uh coming from, you know, like when we was coming up, we pushed lawnmowers, we yeah. on those, yeah. on trash. Yeah. Somewhere down the line, you know, dealing with addiction, you did what I'm saying, life stop. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. No, I don't know what you're saying. Basically, what I'm going to show you. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from, I'm coming from, you know, faith without work is dead. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Once upon a time, we had faith, but somewhere down the line, we started using that substance. Faith was gone. Work wasn't no part of, the only thing we worked was to get a next hot. Really? We get clean. Now when we get clean, some still stay stagnant because that's, like I said, that's all they know. It's the, it, it's the bag. Instead mm. of getting out there hustling. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's like it's like me. I'm in a wheelchair. But they'll tell you, man, I walk, I walk around here every day, man, and I got people that come out here and I cut their hair. Yeah. Coming off from Atlanta. And wow. I cut their hair. So wow. I don't stop. Wow. All because, all because my momentum has stopped, but my mind and my soul and my heart hasn't stopped. Because mm. I know what I want and what I believe in. Mm. I believe in me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's one thing I believe. When they took my, like I said, when they took my leg, I lost all hope. When I tell you a condo, money, car, the girl, all that, my whole world was shattered. Mm. But, I didn't, but one thing, I didn't lose the focus because I said I had the focus. I'm going to work again. Mm. So until then, guess what I did? I put my clippers to work. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a certified chef and a master bar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got skill. Okay. A lot of people don't okay. utilize their skill because they want to sit here and chill. And like you say, wait on the check. So let's do this. Let's go a little bit further because you know, still some people in this particular group who they may or may not be be, be here right now, and, they, and and we may need to go, we need to dig a little bit deeper, right? So let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's keep going this conversation, right? Because the time is twelve oh five, and we got about twenty five minutes. Let's keep going. All right. I read a st- I read a story a couple years ago that really hit home. A man was visiting a friend. And as he was approaching the, uh, the porch, Jonathan, he could hear his friend's dog moaning and groaning. Y'all know I'm going with this, Isaac. When his friend answered the door, he asked him, what's wrong with the dog? This is what he said, Perry. His friend said, he's lying on a nail. Daniel. And then I know you had a comment. The friend, okay, so listen, so listen, so listen, listen, listen. So the the man came to the door, right? And the dog was Bella. What Bella? She said, Bella, get over here. Come on, look at you. You always get into something. Uh, yeah, I just get over here. Bella, stop being hard headed. So I, she ain't playing. She jumped with some ducks yesterday. We was fishing. I got to tell you about. It. Okay, come on, Bella, come on, Bella, come on, come on. So listen. So the man, you ain't in trouble. 
So, all right, so the man, <laughs> so the man walked to the door, right? Y'all came to my house and y'all seen Bella. And, and James Bradley, you asked Leo, why is Bella moaning like that? And I said, well, bro, she laying on the nail. Let's keep going. This baffled the man because he wondered why the dog would continue to lie on the nail when it obviously was causing him pain. He asked his friend, Willie, Will, why doesn't the dog just get up? Isaac, his friend said, I guess it just don't hurt bad enough. Okay, maybe, maybe, that, was, that, maybe that was too much. Miss Annie, Miss Annie, the dog was laying on a nail. James asked me, why is your dog just laying on a nail? Talking about, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Miss Annie, I said, well, I, I don't know. I, I guess it ain't hurting him. It ain't hurting her enough. Got me. Got me. Somebody answer this this question. It's not a riddle. But I want somebody to give me give me a reason why a person would lay on a nail and be ah oh ah why don't you just get out of bed? Why would they just lay there on that nail? Why would a, why would an animal lay there on the nail? Help me to understand why a person would sit here and they would smoke crack cocaine over and over again and say oh my god I almost died. And they say this every week or every other day, or, or they would drink to the point where they got so drunk where they had their had their stomach pumped out, or, or they passed out, or, or a person would sit in and they would um, constantly let somebody else bully them in situations and put them in predicaments in which you know what I'm saying they know they shouldn't be in, but they just keep keep giving it. Why would a woman go out and prostitute over and over again when when she knows that she almost lost her life the last two times she did it? I don't understand. Why do people lay on nails? And they don't move. Somebody, come on, somebody, somebody, somebody has to be smarter than me in this situation. Let's go one, then two. Go. Because if somebody laid on a nail and they know it hurts, then probably their mind is not comprehending, saying, oh my God, it hurts. They probably stop on stupid and just gonna lay on the nail. And like the girl with prostitution, mm -hmm. there's so many diseases out there, and mm -hmm. she could have lost her life by one of them. So why does she do it? Why did that dog lay on the nail? Because why? Because she's not thinking right. So they're not thinking. So something's going on. Okay, let's go one and two. Hakeem, why? What? I'm just thinking. I, I have a question. Like, yeah. I, I don't be seeing myself doing nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, but like I feel the pain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel the pain. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I feel the pain. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 Hakeem says, you know, I just, I see myself doing something. I know it hurt, but I just, wait, I don't see myself, right? I don't see myself. Sometimes in, 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 in as therapists and in, in, in clinicians, we throw around terms and we assume that you all know what it means. Does anybody know what it means to be delusional? Let me give you my definition, and then Mike can give you his definition. Del I'm sorry. Delus to be delusional means... <laughs> <laughs> You think you're experiencing something, but you're not. It could be something that scares you. It could be something that excites you. It could be something that you, you felt like not being for. It's like a deja vu experience. But in reality, you ain't, nothing's there. You're afraid of spiders, it's not, there's nothing there. You, 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 think, you think that, I see, you think that that soda you're drinking is, is, uh, is a protein shake. And, and you think it's, it's healthy, right? But it's not. You... Okay, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you. Delusion is the opposite of faith. Faith is the belief, right, that something great is going to happen, right, and you're stepping out. Delusion is, I'm not going to step out because ain't nothing happening. Matter of fact, this nail I'm laying on, I feel that pain, that's real pain, that's love. This, this dude beat me up, right, domestic, this woman, she, you take, you're taking those balls, right? But that's pain. That's how he shows he loves me. My friend, he keep putting my hand and saying, hey, bro, come on, man. Let's go smoke this joint real quick. Well, that's pain. He loves me. That's why he's doing it. This person keep giving me this, this food that's, that's unprocessed and, and it's nasty. And, it's, and they know I got diabetes, but they keep feeding me all this sugar over and over again. Well, they feed me that. Why? Because they love me. That's a lie. Those are delusional thoughts. Mike, you want to add to it or subtract? Nah, that's pretty simple. You okay. Know, I hear it a lot of times. Listen, if I just get a job, everything, I'll be all right. Everything would change. <laughs> just give me a job, everything will be fine. 
I don't need to stop smoking crack. I don't need to stop drinking. I don't need to take showers. I don't need to perform ADLs, cleaning my room, my area, and all that. Just give me a job. So you get a job. A job with no shower. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got you next. <laughs> Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, I was see, uh, I got my own home nurse here. <laughs> yeah, go, go over here. Somebody give him a drink of Hunnaman, please. Okay, I got you covered. Go ahead. Um, I, I know we're going back in the back. I want to go back to the dog, too, though. Let's go back to the dog. We ain't moving on. Go ahead. Uh, the dog was on the knee, right? You say, you know, the man walked up to the door. You hear the dog. Mom. Yeah. Now he asked the owner to say, why the dog's still on the knee? Yeah. Okay. That's just like me and us. See me moaning. Lift me up. But if I go back to the nail, then that's a you know that's a mental health situation. But ain't that what he's doing now? Yeah, but basically what I'm saying now, he didn't in the book, he didn't never ask the dog to get up. <laughs> that's a great point. Is that what he said? <laughs> so that goes back to he almost stole my stole my thunder in a minute. So there's this man laying he's he's laying by the pool. His quote unquote friends or associates is walking past him, right? He laying on a nail. He hurting. He, he moaning. Uh, uh. Who was the one person that came and helped him get off that nail? Come on, y'all know the story. Who came and helped him? This man that's laying by this pool. Who was the one person? This thing, I think so. Yeah, Jesus. Now let me tell y'all something. Let me ask y'all something. I know this isn't a, this isn't church. I'm not I'm not a religious man. I'm, I'm more of a spiritual man. But I, I I'm I'm a I'm a student of everything, right? And I believe in God. Here's my here's my confusion. If all Jesus did was come to a person who was moaning and say, "Hey, bro, let me help you out," and he scooted him over a little bit, is that really a miracle? Yeah, it's kind of logic. <laughs> but it is a miracle because here's this. There's 17 other people in this tent and only one of them had the, the mental capacity, the empathy, the love to move this man half an inch. And now this person's like, oh my God, I feel the pain is gone. I'm saved. No, I just moved you an inch. But think about his reality. Everybody around him allowed him what to lay on that nail. So when this one person came and said, "I'm gonna move you over one this little inch," now this man fell in love with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus did he performed a miracle. But when we break this thing down, it wasn't really a miracle. It was common sense. But when you live in a delusional state of mind or an environment in which it's not common to help a person move from from this from this nail to off the nail. You think that it's okay for let for you to walk past people and they they crying and they, they need help and he's like, I ain't help you. You think that's normal. Why? Because everybody else is doing it. Let me tell you a quick story. Now I love my story. Let me tell you a story. Alright, maybe y'all can get this, maybe you can't. And if you heard this story before, do not tell the answer. So there was this one gesture, he was a gesture was back in the day, you know, kings and queens, right? And um, gestures make everybody laugh. They come and they perform tricks, right? Not only was he a gesture, but he was also a magician. So a magician came in front of this king and queen, right? Um, came in front of him, and he started performing. He did his little tricks and so on and so forth. Well, the king nor the queen laughed. They thought he was horrible. They said, man, get out of the kingdom. First time he ever got rejected. So imagine Kevin Hart standing here and he performing and ain't nobody laughing. So that pissed Kevin Hart off. That pissed the jest off. So he left. He said, okay, I'm going to teach y'all something. So he left the kingdom. He went and he made a concoction. A concoction is he, 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 he Got it and he mixed it up and he said, you know what? I'm gonna go to the the, the well. The well was the thing in the hole. Remember, the, you know, back in the day, put the bucket in and put the water up, right? Okay. So he went to the well. He poured his concoction in the water, right? And everybody in the kingdom, listen, y'all, listen. Everybody in the kingdom, Bella. Everybody in the kingdom started to drink from this well, except for the king and the queen. Catch this. It's very important. That you catch this. Everybody in the kingdom start looking at the king and the queen and, and, and start to feel like, you know what, they're they crazy. They're, they're, they're asking us to do stuff that that's not, that's not, no. Now, the king and the queen looked at everybody else in the kingdom and was like, what's going on with our people? They're doing things that's strange, right. like something's happening. 
So now, the king and the queen didn't know that the magician had poured a concoction, a drug, into the water that everybody in the village, everybody in the kingdom was drinking. So the people in the kingdom was delusional. They were high. But nobody knew they was high. The king and the queen were not high. They were sober. So the king and the queen started to pass all these laws, right? You know, don't do this, don't do that, so on and so forth. Because they noticed the people in the kingdom was high. They were tripping. But the people in the kingdom felt like the king and the queen was tripping. So the, king, so the people in the kingdom decided, we're going to kill the king and the queen because they're crazy. We need a new king, new queen. Here's my question before I tell you the rest of the story. Who was delusional? The king and the queen or the people in the kingdom? Who was delusional? You say the king and the queen. No, you said. Oh, the king and the kingdom. Okay. Who, 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 if you agree that the king, the people in the kingdom were delusional, raise your hand. If you think they was, they was high, they was crazy. Okay. If you think the king and the queen was delusional, raise your hand. Here's the answer. The king and the queen, the queen came to the king and said, baby, we losing this fight. They about to kill us. So, I don't know what they drinking, I don't know what they smoking, but we might as well do the same thing. So they went not knowing and they started drinking and eating the food that the people in the kingdom. And all of a sudden, they went crazy, they went high. So the moment they got high and they got drunk, now they start speaking the same language as everybody in the kingdom. And the people in the kingdom were all oh, finally, they're not crazy no more. And they didn't kill them. So here's the thing. Say up, Mike. Mike said something very, very, very important this morning in his session about addiction. He said that you have to what? Change your environment, right? The magician, he influenced the environment of people. What's the difference between the dope man that comes into a community where there's no drugs? And he gives one person the drugs. Then he gives another person. Then he gives another person. Did he not just poison the well that everybody drinks from? Yes, then after a while, that community that once was a, a wonderful Bible community turned into a trap community, right? And then the people on the outside who live where I live look at these communities and say, oh, man, that's a ghetto. Is it really? It's not. Because if you live in the ghetto, where I was born and raised, it, it was perfectly fine. I was born and raised in the projects, you know what I'm saying? So it was normal to see that stuff. It wasn't until I left the kingdom and went to another kingdom that I was like, okay, well, that's, that's bad. And now the people who I left look at me like, Leo crazy. How, how, how you just going to leave the hood, bro, and go live out there with white folk? How you going to do that? Well, I stopped drinking the Kool-Aid. I stopped taking the drug. And until you stop taking the drug, you're going to think I'm crazy, like I'm a sellout. But you don't even know that you're delusional. Because you don't even know that a magician came in and poured stuff in your world that poisoned your mind. So until you realize and you change your environment, we can't even talk. We can't even kick it. Why? Because you're drunk. And you're not going to believe me. Because I'm not smoking and drinking with you no more. When I was drinking and smoking with you, we could talk. Go ahead. Just, just, Thanks, Mike. Um, when I came here, you know, um, I I was doing what everybody else did. Yeah. Because that's you know that's what I knew. But I you know somewhere down in that three weeks came to click, and I said, man, this ain't what I'm about. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you know, um, it's just like when a lot of people they see you sitting around. Guess what they gonna do? They gonna just block down because they don't see nobody doing that. And if everybody, if if if, if you five or six people. Look like they moving forward. That's the people you need to tag on to. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But That's right. Now, you wake up every morning, come out here with your coffee, sit out here with your cigarette, with everybody else doing, and you sit here in conversation. You ain't thinking. You ain't trying to have nothing. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. A lot of people think I be trying to be funny, but man, I don't. I don't. I don't. Put, like this conversation, I can sit in here, but we see they tell you when they come to sit down and take playing that music and all that, and I get on, man. But that's not what I want to fill my mind with. Yeah. I get it. I get it. First of all, we have to change our thinking before we can change anything. Anything. The environment, the geographical change ain't gonna change you. Your mind got to change first. The hood is a state of mind, man. Say it again. I'm from Miami. I'm from North Miami, man. I can show you the hood. I can too. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
it's a state of mind. That's man. right. Even when we doing drugs, that's a state of mind. You know, we walk, they can hang out. Yeah, we can walk away from that. But we, if, if, if one can do it, we all can do it. But see, guess what? You doing something real. Okay, let me show you. This is what I learned by being out here. You can be doing, you can be, I'm sorry, man, you're on your knees, you're doing this. Yeah. Trying to look forward, trying to yeah. do something. Yeah. But guess what? Oh, them over there talking about this. Like, oh, man, man. Oh, I'm Slim doing what he supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Now, they'll, they'll get in your head, man. I'm fuck with that nigga. This nigga ain't shit. Mm -hmm. Excuse my friend. Yeah, nah, you right. But guess what? You looking at that person through somebody else's eye. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Instead of asking that person, how you do this, man? Can I be a part of that? There yeah, it is. See, we still yeah, victimized by what other people yeah, say. Exactly. That's it. So we stay in that way. That's it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now nah, you right. I, mean, I look at this every day, man. It's the same thing every day. In this house that I they come right here, get on this bed, smoke their cigarette, he run up the street, run down. I can tell you everybody moves me. There it is. There it is. And I don't even be here. I can, but I'm saying when I was there built, is. I can tell you everybody moves me. Because if we don't see, they show, they show me what not to do. Yeah. Y'all showing me what to do. Yeah. My man got clothes in there like that. I can't wait to put my leg on so I can put them things on in there, man. Yeah. Cause this is. But you said it. The key yeah. point: change your thinking. Thank you, man. Change your thinking. Get them on Practical, light, man. Practical example. Yeah, I know stuck, somebody. We want to be stuck. I know somebody mm -hmm. around here get That's up right. in the morning, <laughs> ask fifty cents from this person, a <laughs> dollar from that person, get a cigarette, let me go up there and do all that, okay. all to get cigarettes. Yeah. Say cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How much is a case of water? <laughs> I'm gonna show you what the cap is. It's like $3. Case of water is $3. You can get out there on the corner. So if you can get out there and pull up $3, go buy you a case of water and stand out there like them kids. You can yeah, make at least $24. But guess what, though? Them kids ain't licking. They licking presentable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They licking presentable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Presentation's there, but I want to say one thing what Mr. Arm was saying on TV last Sunday. Mm -hmm. He said negativity is like a germ. It's like counseling and everything. Let me show you something. It spreads like the plague. Yeah. Yeah. Once it hits your ear, somebody else trying to stick some positive on the thing you're thinking about is what that man said. Because it sounds good to you. That's right. When somebody come in telling you the truth, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> so you got a blockage. You don't have no open mind. That's right. Nothing. That's right. That's right. Let's 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 conclude this because it's 1225. Let's conclude this. Conclude. Sorry. Let's conclude this. I know, man. She, she been a dog. If she wasn't, I'll say something wrong with her. All right. You have the power to choose to go a different in a different direction. You have the power to move from your pain and into your promise. If you are in a negative situation that is causing you problems and pain, maybe it's time to take a fresh look at yourself. Let me pause for this last sentence. When I work out and I train, my trainer makes it his business and my business that I step on the scale and I look at the numbers. Then he, I take my stuff off and he look at the mirror and he start poking and pulling stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then after he poking and pulling and so on and so forth, then he says, Leo, we're going to do this today. We're going to do what? Why? Let me show you. And he grabbed that fat again, right? I'm like, okay, I know why. Okay. Here's the thing. If I didn't look in the mirror myself, it don't matter what he said, I wouldn't be convinced. But because he made me look at myself, now when he told me it's time to move, we're going to do this and that, I'm in agreement. I changed, I influenced my own mental state of mind because I looked at myself first. Most of us don't look at ourselves. I'm not an addict. I don't proclaim to be. That's why I got have this man here who's an expert, right? And I, and I, I listen to what y'all say, right? I, I'll never sit here and tell somebody how to get somewhere if I ain't never been. I, I, don't, I don't do that. You feel me? Here's my thing. If you can't look at yourself after you smoke a drink and you don't see something wrong with it, let me tell you something, homeboy, ma'am. You need some help. If I can look at the mirror and see, look, them gummies, they ain't helping me. And I can stop eating gummies? I know good dog on well you can stop smoking. This man said he walked up and down the streets and he in a wheelchair. Some of y'all can't walk up and down the stairs and you have two good legs. Something's wrong with that. But you think you're in perfect health? Let me tell you something. You're laying on a nail. You just don't know it. And I'm trying to do my Jesus impression and move you to the side. But by you, James Shans, not coming and receiving this message, you're saying I'm comfortable laying on a nail. 
See where I'm going? Yeah. Some of y'all in this particular program are at a point where, you know what? You're not only going to group here, you're going to Stone Mountain. You're about to start going uh, to the volunteer. We've got a work program happening. You're moving. Yeah. You're moving. You're progressing. And then we got all of us. We can't even make it a group. And group is what? Ten minutes? Ten <laughs> minutes from the ten, ten, ten steps? It's like, it's right here. Right now. But, but when the time comes and, and other people are moving and going on trips and getting their own apartments and, and they, they making more than $700 a month, you're looking at them and you want to hate. You know what I'm saying? You want to hate on this man because this man done put in work. You ain't put in no work. But you want the same donut. Stop it. Stop it. Come on, stop it. Let's end with this. Let's end with this. Okay. Uh, let's let, I'm going to read this quote, and then I'm going to let Jonathan and Mike uh, close us out. This is a quote by Brett, uh, Brian Tracy. All right, bro, be easy, man. Move out of your comfort zone. You can only grow if you are willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable when you try something new. Do it one more time, Harry. Move out of your comfort zone. You can only grow, Ms. Ann, if you are willing to feel awkward, James, and uncomfortable when you try, Linnell, something new. Jonathan, then Mike, close it up. I was going to say this morning, uh, Kendrick Lamar's song on his uh, Temple Butterfly album called Institutionalized. And basically, the chorus is saying, shit don't change until you get up and wash your ass. <laughs> and that was one of the realest songs I've ever heard. And I listened to that song, that's a motivation, because it's like, if you just sitting, like he said, if you just sitting in the house, comfortable, in your bed, or whatever the case may be, nothing's gonna change. Like, you're not getting up, you're not making no steps towards where you wanna be. So I just want to leave y'all with that. The song's called Institutionalized, shit don't change, so you get up and wash your ass. <laughs> just want to say.